2019. That's more than a window. And more for your money. Call 855-57-CREEK. Good morning, America. ABC News exclusive. Our explosive interview with fired FBI Director James Comey. He calls President Trump morally unfit to be president. Talks about and treats women like they're pieces of meat who lies constantly about matters big and small and insists the American people believe it. That person's not fit to be president of the United States on moral grounds. Compares the president to a mob boss. Was President Trump obstructing justice? What Comey says about impeachment and the president's character. Now, live reaction from the White House this morning, right here on GMA. Overnight, deadly tornadoes ripped through the South, destroying homes, tearing apart this elementary school. Record-setting snow in the Midwest, and now that major storm is moving east. Millions now bracing for a dangerous commute this morning. The latest on First Lady Barbara Bush as the 92-year-old ends medical treatment. Her family gathers by her side. We're live in Texas. Starbucks under fire. Outrage growing after two black men were arrested in a Philadelphia store. The company now apologizing. Starbucks CEO is here live only on GMA this morning. And countdown to the royal wedding. The bombshell new tell-all book about Meghan Markle. The author here live only on GMA. Live in Times Square. This is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. And we do say good morning, America. We hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. A very busy Monday morning. A lot of reaction coming in, George, to your interview. Boy, there sure is. It was coming in all night long. Yeah, that's right. It was one of the top trends on Twitter throughout the night, and understandably so, George. Well, you know, and it, it wasn't just the hour of television last night. I remember we sat down for several hours, so people were going through the transcript and getting all those headlines as well. When you talk about Twitter, it all began with President Trump. He was on Twitter. You see it up on the wall right there. Even before... That interview aired last night, calling James Comey a slime ball, the worst FBI director in history, a liar. Now you can listen to Comey and judge for yourself. It was an intense interview. For several hours, James Comey, the man who stood at the crossroads of the most divisive election of modern times, addressed his most controversial decisions and delivered a series of jaw-dropping conclusions. Do you think the Russians have something on Donald Trump? I think it's possible. I don't know. These are more words I never thought I'd utter about a president of the United States, but it's possible. That's stunning. You can't say for certain that the president of the United States is not compromised by the Russians. Yeah, it is stunning, and I wish I wasn't saying it, but it's just, it's the truth. It always struck me and still strikes me as unlikely, and I would have been able to say with high confidence about any other president I dealt with, but I can't. It's possible. Thinking back to his time as a prosecutor investigating the Gambino crime family, Comey compares Donald Trump to a mob boss. There's a distinction between a friend of yours and a friend of ours. I felt this effort to make us all, and maybe this wasn't their intention, but it's the way it felt to me, to make us all a Mica Nostra. We're all part of the messaging. We're all part of the effort. The boss is at the head of the table, and we're going to figure out together how to do this. How strange is it for you to sit here and compare the president to a mob boss? Very strange. And I don't do it lightly. And I'm not trying to, by that, by the way, suggest that President Trump is out breaking legs and shaking down shopkeepers. But instead, what I'm talking about is that leadership culture constantly comes back to me when I think about my experience with the Trump administration. Comey explains his thinking on the October surprise that Hillary Clinton believes cost her the White House. Why did he reveal he was reopening the Clinton email investigation? We knew about it, as I assume when you knew about it. He says he had no choice after additional emails are found on the computer of Anthony Weiner, husband of one of Clinton's top aides. You could try to find out first whether or not they were indeed relevant, whether they, there was evidence there of a crime. Well, maybe, and maybe another director might have done that. My view is that would be a potentially deeply irresponsible and dangerous thing to do. But we don't know what's in it. Well, we know there are hundreds of thousands of Hillary Clinton's emails there. That's an affirmative act of concealment. What the public doesn't know at the time is that the FBI is actively investigating the Trump campaign and whether members were working with the Russians to influence the election. Your critics say this is a clear, clear, clear double standard. You revealed information about Hillary Clinton. You concealed information about Donald Trump. That elected Donald Trump. Take a step back and stare at the two cases and the posture they were in. 
The Hillary Clinton email case was public, and the counterintelligence investigations trying to figure out whether a small group of people, not Donald Trump, we were not investigating Donald Trump, whether this small group of Americans was coordinating anything with the Russians. We had just started the investigation, didn't know whether we had anything, so it would have been brutally unfair to those people to talk about it, and it would have jeopardized the investigation. February 14, 2017. In a meeting alone with the president, Comey says Trump brings up the investigation into Mike Flynn, his former national security advisor, fired because he lied about contacts with Russians. And that's when he asked me, said he hopes I can let it go. And when he said that, you thought? He's asking me to drop a criminal investigation of his now former national security advisor. Direction. I took it as a direction. He, his words were, though, I hope you can let it go. I took the expression of hope as... This is what I want you to do. This the president is, says he didn't say that. Yeah. Well, what am I going to do? He did. From this encounter, a startling conclusion. Was President Trump obstructing justice? Possibly. I mean, it's certainly some evidence of obstruction of justice. At some point in your mind, as you're writing these notes, have you shifted to collecting evidence of a possible crime? Well, yes, in a sense. I continued to believe that there was force to the FBI general counsel's argument that we're going to have to look at the president. You're inevitably going to look at his conduct because he's the head of the campaign. As the interview concludes, Comey's personal judgments about the president scathing. You write that President Trump is unethical, untethered to the truth. Is Donald Trump unfit to be president? Yes, but not in the way I often hear people talk about it. I don't buy this stuff about him being mentally incompetent or early stages of dementia. He strikes me as a person of above average intelligence who's tracking conversations and knows what's going on. I don't think he's medically unfit to be president. I think he's morally unfit to be president. Our president must embody respect and adhere to the values that are at the core of this country, the most important being truth. This president is not able to do that. He is morally unfit to be president. A person who sees moral equivalence in Charlottesville, who talks about and treats women like they're pieces of meat, who lies constantly about matters big and small and insists the American people believe it, that person's not fit to be president of the United States on moral grounds. If you're right, what is the remedy? Should Donald Trump be impeached? Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll give you a strange answer. I hope not. Because I think impeaching and removing Donald Trump from office would let the American people off the hook and have something happen indirectly that I believe they're duty bound to do directly. People in this country need to stand up and go to the voting booth and vote their values. Values matter. This president does not reflect the values of this country. Powerful statement there, and there were so many jaw-dropping yeah. moments of the interview, and as you said, you spent several hours with him. Everything about it is jaw-dropping when you think about it. I mean, you just take a step back here. There you had an FBI director who was investigating both presidential campaigns. Half the country thinks he decided right. yeah. the election. Then he's investigating the Trump campaign, and he gets fired by the president. And now, for several hours, unloading like this, again, we have never seen anything like this in our history. What surprised you the most from the interview? What didn't surprise me? I mean, it was really, it was really the judgments he came to in the end, that he cannot rule out that President Trump is compromised by the Russians. As I said in the interview, I was stunned by that. I'm stunned by it still. And a lot of people didn't know the stance of his wife. Her We're going to learn a lot more about her. I think yeah, it's one of the things. We, she only popped up a little bit mm -hmm. in the piece last night. But when you find out that his wife and daughters were all in the march mm -hmm. the day after the inauguration, it's something she explains march. a lot more about that at 7.30. Okay. And James Comey's book is out right now. Tuesday. Well. Tomorrow. Tuesday, comes out tomorrow. Higher loyalty. Okay. On mm -hmm. Tuesday. And President Trump is also facing new trouble, though, from that FBI raid of his personal attorney, Michael Cohen's office. The president is now demanding the right to review materials they seized as Cohen prepares to head to court today. Our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, has more on that. Good morning, John. Good morning, Robin. Late last night, the president's legal team filed an eight-page letter with the court asking to see all of the material seized from Cohen by the FBI. They want to see it before the Justice Department sees it. And the stakes here are incredibly high. The president's legal team is more concerned about what, are, what might be in Cohen's files than they are even about the Mueller investigation. This was a person, Cohen, who for more than a decade was the president's fixer. As one person close to the president told ABC News, even before the seizure, 
If there's one person who can bring down the president, it is Michael Cohen. And the president himself is furious about all of this, most recently tweeting, attorney-client privilege is now a thing of the past. I have many, too many lawyers, and they are probably wondering when their offices, even their homes, are going to be raided with everything, including their phones and computers, taken. By the way, Robin, at today's hearing, Michael Cohen may come face to face with the porn star that started all of this. Stormy Daniels says that she plans to be there in court today. We'll see what Robin. happens. All right, John, thank you. George. Let's get more now from the counsel of the president, Kellyanne Conway. Conway, she joins us live from the White House this morning. Kellyanne, thank you for joining us Hi, George. this morning. We, we saw a lot from the president on Twitter before the James Comey interview. Did he watch last night? What's his reaction? I spoke with the president before the interview, and the president reminded me that Jim Comey said publicly that he felt nervous before he met the president, admitted that to you. What we don't understand is why, if you're going to meet the president of the United States, the president-elect, you're not saying, my, my ticker list is, I've got to tell him about the Russian interference. I must tell him about the investigations that are ongoing. Instead, he takes time to talk about the size of his hands and the length of his tie. That's really gutter. And the fact that Mr. Comey admitted to you that he allowed polling and politics to influence his decision is much why Rod Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General, in a, in a scathing memo on May 9th, and others, other former attorneys general, had called for Mr. Comey to step aside because they felt like he can no longer hold up the values of the FBI. He admitted to you that he purposely leaked information to a friend so that it would get into the media and trigger a special counsel. This guy swung an election. He, he thought the wrong person would win. His people in his household wanted the other person to win. And now, at the end of your interview, George, he gave a free political commercial telling people to go out there and vote against the president and his, and his interest. I think he struggled to answer basic questions, and he looked a little shaky. Uh, he also, I, I really was very struck that when he was meeting with the president, it's three very limited meetings with the president of the United States, I thought to myself, you waited two months as the FBI director to go and meet with the president-elect, and then you waited nearly a year to tell the country what was on your mind. If he really felt like he was saving the country rather than selling books, why did he wait until an interview with you not under oath and selling a book not under oath? Well, he actually answered a lot of those questions under oath before the Senate Judiciary Committee last year as well. And, and, in fact, and then they had to correct his testimony. They had to correct his testimony. He said there were hundreds of thousands of confidential emails on Huma Abedin and Anthony Weiner's server, and the FBI had to immediately correct his testimony that there were a handful. Uh, he's an admitted leaker. And I think what really strikes people last night is when you have a, you have a private audience with the president, you should use that time to discuss major law enforcement, counterterrorism issues of the day. Instead, it sounds like he's taking notes for a future book. Well, and he's Kelly, truly Kelly, troubled about his interactions. I've, I've given you a fair amount of time there to throw a lot out, 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 out on that. First of all, he was saying that in that February 14th meeting with the president, he did give him a counterintelligence briefing, and it was the president who asked him to stand back after, throw, after asking everyone else to leave the room, and that's when the president, according to James Comey, asked him to let the hope, said he would hope that he would let the Flynn investigation go. I know the president has denied that. That's what right. What we have from James Comey on all of his encounters with the president are notes, his contemporaneous conversations with others in the FBI. We know that all of that has been given to, to Robert Mueller. Does the president have any evidence to back up his side of the story? I watched Jim Comey tell you last night he agreed with the president that Mike Flynn was, quote, a good guy, a good man. Uh, the president has made very clear that he never asked anyone to interfere in an investigation. And Jim Comey had admitted that in testimony that nobody here had ever asked him to drop an investigation for political Actually, reasons. Actually, I, I had that to Kelly, and I have, to stop, I have to stop you there because that is not correct either. What, what James Comey was asked about at the Senate is whether the Attorney General or anyone at the Justice Department ever asked him to stop an investigation. He said no. He was not asked about the President. What he has consistently said about the President is that he took those comments from the President about Michael Flynn as direction. That has been his consistent story. And George, what did He's he do with it? He's never changed it. George, excuse me, what did he do with it? Did he run out and tell the attorney general, please come in here, I feel uncomfortable? Did he call back the vice president? No, this man, Jim Comey, loves to be within the proximity of power. He loved having dinner alone with the president. If he hadn't, he should have invited someone or asked who else was going to be there. He loved being alone in the Oval Office. He wanted the piece of it. He loved being in the proximity of power until he got fired and then wrote a book. And let's be very honest, these are high stakes issues that are, having, that are going on. This is somebody 
who, who admitted to you last night that he leaked information, that the House investigators are looking for those memos. Why does the New York Times have a right to get the leaked information and not the House and the House committees who represent all of us? Kill, What's Kellyanne. fair is fair. Uh, we, we have to go. I just want to go back to my first question because you said you talked to the president before the interview. Did he watch the interview? Does he have any reaction to that? I think he's aware of some of the excerpts and his, his reaction is the same as it was when he saw excerpts earlier, which is this is somebody who's not under oath in interviews and, and writing a book and this is somebody who is giving a revisionist version of history. Uh, the president hardly knew the man. The president said that and the president answered within days of their interaction in a press conference for all to see. You played the clip last night that he did not ask him to stop at any investigation. Uh, the president is, is very is very confounded that this person is is always able to divert the spotlight to him, whether it's the July 5th press conference, it's the October 28th announcement about the Hillary Clinton investigation being reopened. He has a very deft way of making things about him. And he ran an FBI department that has 25,000 rank and file men and women who are very honorable, but had a lot of folks like Strzok and Page and Orr and his wife who were against this president and were for Hillary Clinton and he let that cloud his judgment. Kellyanne Conway, thanks for your time this morning. Thank Robin. you. Okay, George, now to Barbara Bush, the former First Lady who is suffering from heart and respiratory failure, has now stopped seeking additional, additional medical treatment. She is surrounded by her family at home. ABC's Marcus Moore is there in Houston, has the latest for us. Good morning, Marcus. Well, Robin, good morning. We understand that those family members started arriving here in Houston on, on Wednesday. Mrs. Bush has been suffering from congestive heart failure and chronic respiratory illness. And the family announced that the 92-year-old matriarch, as you said, will not seek additional medical treatment at a hospital. Instead, she will focus on comfort care at home. And as you know, the former first lady has been in and out of the hospital for the past several years suffering from various illnesses. And her husband's office released a statement saying in part that throughout all of it, she has been, quote, a rock in the face of her failing health. And uh, thanks to her abiding faith, she has not worried about herself, but others. And this morning, Robin, there is an outpouring of support for the former first lady and her family. Robin. Uh, I hope the family feels the love. We are certainly thinking of them and the Bushes married more than 70 years, Amy. All right, Robin, thank you. We are keeping them in our prayers. Now to that major spring storm on the move, bringing deadly tornadoes to the south and blizzard conditions to the Midwest. And now millions here in the Northeast are racing for a messy commute this morning. And Rob is tracking all of this. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Amy, here in the Northeast. The rain, the wind picking up, in some cases blowing sideways, all from this storm that created havoc across much of the country over the weekend, a blizzard and tornadoes. 31 reports of it, over 500 severe weather reports. Check out this video out of Meridian, Mississippi where tornadoes swept through that area and uh, tore off the roof of uh, this particular building. Also video uh, out of uh, parts of Virginia showing similar damage. Two dozen homes being uh, ripped apart there last night. But there you see the squall line moving across Philadelphia. We have a, a flash flood warning in effect there for this squall line. That is really going to be nasty across I-95 throughout the next several hours. So we're in it with some sleet, especially across the Northeast. Time now for your select cities brought to you by Breathe Right. <laughs> Ah, my poor mouth breather. Allergies, stuffy nose, can't sleep. Enough. Take that. A Breathe Right nasal strip, of course. Imagine, just put one on and pow, it instantly opens your nose. Up to 38% more than allergy medicine alone. So you can breathe and sleep. <laughs> Better than a catnap. Shut your mouth and say goodnight, mouth breathers. Breathe Right. Well, that heavy rain over the thunderstorms, too, but today is still going to be damp through the rest of the morning rush. Some occasional showers expect that, and our temperatures will stay parked in the mid-50s most of the day, all as the winds start to pick up with gusts around 30 miles per hour. This is a snapshot of 2 o'clock, still some occasional showers left across the area, then winding down by the time we get to the evening rush. Tomorrow's high, 53, 65 on Wednesday, your warmest day out of the work week. Next weather maker comes in Thursday at 62. Coming up, more of our exclusive interview with James Comey and his wife, Patrice. She'll take us inside the family when they found out he was fired. Also, we have an ABC News exclusive for you this morning. The first live interview with the CEO of Starbucks, Kevin Johnson, after two black men were arrested at a Starbucks in Philadelphia. We will have the latest when we come back on this Monday morning here on GMA.